What's happening gamers? This is John of Video Games in the World and welcome back to Star Wars Rogue Squadron for the PC. So our next mission is the beginning of chapter three and that is the battle above the skies of Talaran. And in this chapter we are introduced to, an, to the main antagonist of the game. The new threat. So this takes place shortly after the rescue of Wedge Antilles and, Ro and now Rogue Squadron is at full strength. And now there's a new threat. Moff Searden. Preparing to uh, capture Thyphera with his precious supply of the healing Bacta, Searden is now consolidating his power for a massive attack. His success could very well break the fledging rebellion and truly doom the galaxy to Imperial rule. And now it's time to hit key targets with these swift hit and run missions. And now our fifth Earth's mission in, in, in Chapter 3 will be in the skies of Talaran. It could remind you of Bespin, ladies and gentlemen. So who is called Searden? He was a human male moth who served in the Galactic Empire and was aware of the tactics of Rogue Squadron during the Galactic Civil War. He was an officer from the planet of Chandrilla. And during the Clone Wars, he replaced Hiram Drayson as commander of Chandrilla's defense forces. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Imperials own it. They harvest the Cabana gas to use in their weapons. It increases their firepower. They process and store it on these floating platforms. There are civilians down there too, so make sure what you're shooting at is Imperial. We're here to take out their Cabana gas supplies and do whatever damage we can to the local TIE fighter squadron. Huh. Now I know what it's like to be on the other side of one of these little raids. <laughs> okay, so... What you need to do in this mission is to destroy the Tabana gas cans and do not shoot the one that had the blue stripes on it. Those are civilians. Oh look, that Corellian ship from episode 4. Now this mission can be can be very difficult to get like a, a silver or a gold medal because you need you need a lot of accuracy in this one. But the cool thing about this mission is that you get another bonus item. Advanced blasters, which makes your firepower a little bit more stronger. Yeah. Woo, that was close. Almost crashed into it. So, about Moff Searden, when Palpatine declared his galactic empire, Searden was made Moff of Sector 3 and assumed position of commander of the 3rd Sector Army. And he later arranged for his son, Maximilian, to have a ranking position in the Imperial Security Bureau. Now, Moff Searden was notoriously unforgiving to those who failed him, and considered it the way of the universe that the weak should give away to the strong. He was also a very greedy guy. I'm beginning to see why they say you're the best. But Maximilian Searden, his son, a few months following the Battle of Yavin, Searden compiled various reports of threats to the Galactic Empire to present to Emperor Palpatine. He conferred with Grand Vizier Ate Pestash, who in turn presented the reports to the Emperor. As with Searden's fightings, Palpatine granted him a private retreat on the Deep Core Luxury World, possibly a planet called Bis. You gotta watch out for those turrets too, for those laser turrets too, they can destroy the blue ones. Depending what... Ah! Oh. 
You're gonna... Huh, you're still gonna pay for that. You're so gonna pay for that. Okay, so... Oh, now... Uh-oh. Damn, that's a bunch of ties. Watch out for this tie interceptor. Its firepower hits you all the time. I destroy it right at once before it attacks me. Advanced lasers. Woo! That was close. Come on, come on. Now these ones have missiles. You know, the A-Wing may have weak shields, but it's a pretty fast fighter. Perfectly fit for this mission. Well, I can tell you one thing, Luke. The officer on duty is not going to enjoy explaining this damage to the local moth. He may not live to tell about it. Moth Theoden is notoriously unforgiving. <laughs> and you know, Casey Moore was right. The planet kind of reminds you of, Be of Bespin. During the Talaran operation, a team of rebel commandos stole several ATPTs from an Imperial base on Fest. Unfortunately, their escape did not proceed as well as they expected. Okay, so now our next mission is Fest. Now, this is going to remind you a little bit of, of Empire Strikes Back. An Imperial research facility from which a team of rebel commandos are attempting to liberate a squad of ATPTs. Their escape has become compromised. And we need your help to get them out of there. The speeders and tow cables will help you with any walkers you may find. Good luck. Rogue Squadron, report in. Rogue 7, standing by. Rogue 8, so, standing by. Rogue 9, standing by. Rogue Fest standing by. was a planet in the Fest system in the Atrevis sector in the Outer Rim territories located at Galactic Coordinates L5, covered in ice with mountains and valleys, pretty much like Hoth. Now, the planet of Fest can also be seen in the video game Star Wars Dark Forces. So during the Clone Wars, the, the Separatists set up a research center on Fest, developing the Frick Supermetal. It was raided and destroyed by Omega Squad 10 months into the war. Years later, the planet was ravaged both by a civil war among its inhabitants and a war against Mantuine. The Festians were rebellious to the Galactic Empire and knew that it was about to attack Mantuine, but the distress for each other, coupled with lack of communications facilities, prevented it from giving them warning. Ultimately, however, the two planets found common cause in their conflict with the Empire, and their combined resistance formed the Atrevis Resistance Group. Well, the planet of Fest didn't appear first in this game. It first appeared in Dark Forces, like I said. There's that shield generator that we have to destroy in order to destroy that Imperial base. The gate is down. Had to prevent those ATPTs from getting destroyed because, you know, Imperial Walkers ha have stronger firepower than that of Scout Walkers and ATPTs. And we gotta take out the tanks, too, that are coming after them. Watch out for those tanks. And the turrets, too. Yeah. OK. 
Okay. Got the tanks. Fighters at 2-7? That's not good. Imperial TIE Bombers in this mission. Yeah. Now, you better watch out for those TIE Bombers because their bombs can destroy the ATPTs with one single hit. So be careful. Come and get me. Huh. <sighs> Better be quick. J just two more. Okay, here we go. Yeah. And that's the last of them. And now, let us destroy that uh, shield generator in order to destroy the Imperial base. But first, we need to get a bonus item that's located in the stage. And that's the Seeker Proton Torpedoes. Destroying a high number of enemies to get a gold medal and, and make sure your accuracy is high enough. Not an easy thing. Good job. Okay. And now, the base is unprotected. You know, destroying that shield generator to destroy that base, that's a nice reference to episode 5. The shield generator being destroyed and the rebels forced to escape from their ice base of Hoth. And then rejoin the rebel fleet in outer space. Okay. Seeker Proton Torpedoes. These are necessary for the final battle against Moff Seerden. Okay. And that's it. And now we're going to our next mission, the blockade on Chandrilla. In retaliation for for the destruction of his Imperial base on on Fest, Moff Seerden has chosen to hold his own homeworld hostage, the his home planet of Chandrilla. Okay, now this is to save the train and not disable it, like in, in Castle. So Planet Chandrilla appeared in, in other video games, not just in Rogue Squadron, in 
but also in the in but it's mentioned in Knights of the Old Republic stories it appears in the video game Knights of the Old in the MMO Star Wars game the Old Republic mentioned in Revenge of the Sith and appears in Rogue Squadron in this game of course and Jedi Knight Jedi Academy so So Andrilla was one of the core founders of the Galactic Republic. It was it was idyllic. The history of the planet is was as idyllic as its climate. It is a lush agricultural planet that were covered with rolling grassy plains. One species of plant life was balm grass, a type of grass that was soft to the touch. It remained temperate year-round, with gentle winters and warm summers. Dry seasons were inter interspersed with mild drizzles, leading to a lack of drought. And the inhabitants were uh, of Chandrilla were 96% human. Due to government policy requiring small families, Chandrilla had a remarkably low birth rate, keeping the world's population of 1.2 billion in check. Talk about population control, I think. But Chandrillans acquired a reputation throughout the galaxy as arrogant and argumentative due to partly their emphasis on political education and debate. Since Chandrilla was a world with perfect climate and docile animal life, native Chandrillans were unfamiliar with the everyday struggles of life in less comfortable environments. Talk about a privileged world. Huh, these are the last type type bombers to destroy. The ones who, who attack the train, of course, but now we're gonna have to uh destroy the other type bombers. Yeah. Damn, one of those AT-STs are going to destroy that transport the way it was firing at it. Too close. Way too close. Whew! Okay. Let's take down this last one. All right. Now there is a bonus item in this plane, in this planet, but it's just advanced bombs, nothing more. But dump me, I didn't get it because that's what what's required to get a gold medal. Now. You can unlock the bonus stages when you get all the medals. However, um, you can use a password as well. Man, whatever happened to those good old days is that you didn't need DLC to unlock something so awesome in a video game. Now everything is DLCs. Almost everything, I guess. Come on, let's get him. Let's get those TIE Bombers.
Yeah. Luke, I've lost my stabilizer. Have your arch unit lock it down, Kaysen. Kaysen Moore? Ah, of course. Moss Theoden. How pathetic. Allying yourself with those rebel criminals rogue squadron. You and your so-called rogue tell to me of stumbling of my APP teeth and the plundering of my research facility. My retaliation shall be swift and just. There is nothing just about your actions. Do you no longer harbor any loyalty to our Emperor? Defecting to the rebel terrorists shall be your undoing, Kaysen. Unfortunate to lose such a fine officer, but the weak will die off to make room for the strong. It is the way of the universe. Farewell, little rodent. There you are, you coward. Do you think you can get away in that shuttle? Kaysen, do not pursue that ship. Repeat, do not pursue Sirden. We don't know how many ships he has backing him up. We must remain here to secure Chandrilla. I copy. <laughs> Man, I wish I wish she could have gotten her chance. Yeah, I should have collected that bonus, but but I'll I'll get it later. Engineering an assault on a volcano base at Solus in retaliation for the blockade on Chandrilla. So now we are going to Sullust. Now this mission, dude, this mission is a pain in the ass. And we're going to use Y-Wings in this one. Planet located in the Outer Rim Territories. Reminds me of Mustafar. General Reich can brief you? Yes, the location of this Imperial base was supplied to us by Boston spies. It's a crucial link to the rest of the solar system, so it's also well protected, hidden inside this volcano. They use the volcanic activity to power a geothermal generator which is regulated by a shielded central capacitor. But inside the volcano, several transmitters are feeding thermal energy to the capacitor. Destroy the transmitters. And we take the shield down. Kaysen, you lead the way. Okay, so now there's going to be a lot of missile turrets in this one, so you better get hit. either get ready to have your ass handed down to you, or, if you're lucky enough, deflect those missiles. Huh. This kind of reminds me of Must. Some of you might be reminded of, the, of planet Mustafar in, from episode 3. A volcanic planet. Oh boy. And I just lost R2. These guys can sure be a pain in the neck. Especially with those missile turrets, bro. And this is one of the missions where it's hard to get a freaking gold medal. You can also find the secret proton torpedoes in this one. Ah, oh, Jesus. Freaking missile turrets, man, in this mission. <laughs> Now, there was a battle over Solus during the Clone Wars, according to the Legends canon of Star Wars. In my honest opinion, the Legends canon, better called the Expanded Universe, will always be canon to me. And before Derek Clivian, also known as Hobby, Rode with Rogue Squadron, he, uh, he was working in the solar system running guns.
So, Derek Clivian and was an Imperial pilot at one point, had dreams of becoming an Imperial pilot at one point, and became friends with Big's Dark Lighter, who persuaded him to oppose the Galactic Empire as tyrannical. And then he started running. After a jumping ship, he was running guns in the solar system. But then he he had the chance to fly with Rogue Squadron and fight against the Empire. However, Derek Clivian, he That should do it. The shield should be down. Let's all rendezvous back at the capacitor. We'll need to hit it with all our firepower. I think I think he died in the Battle of Hoth. Well, and now we're gonna have to destroy the capacitor. Watch out for those tie interceptors. <laughs> Let's get out of here before the volcano destabilizes. Rogue Squadron, I'm afraid you'll have to cut your celebration short. Moff Tearden has begun his attack on Cyphera. Oh, shucks. This is all a diversion. And now we're going to have to go go to, to liberate Cyphera from, from the grip of Moff Tearden. It was a hot, humid planet located in the polysystem on the Rimatrade Rood, on which most of the galaxy's Bacta was produced. This is it. Cyphera. Be careful, team. We've got to hit Imperial targets only. Avoid civilian casualties at all costs. We can't afford to lose those back to containers, so be careful. Take your targets and go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is it. The battle against Moff Searden. Now, some TIE Fighters will fight flying groups, but the single ones, they will shoot you. Shoot you with accurate firepower. So be careful. And a bonus item is Cluster Seeker Missiles, which we're going to need for the V-Wing in the next mission. So, prior to the Battle of Yavin, Darth Vader let an assault to root out a traitor. At the end, he force choked an Imperial Commander. Typical Vader. Force he sure loves to force choke... Oak people. <laughs> Now, this takes place like a year after the events of A New Hope. He said Moff Searden set a diversion on Solus. He invaded the planet, sending ATSTs and TIE Interceptors to prevent the Alliance from reaching the group. And to prevent Alliance Bacta from reaching, reaching the, the Rebel Alliance. Now, Bacta was used on Luke Skywalker when you remember him being uh, after Han Solo saved him from him. Now, we all remember Luke Skywalker getting captured by that, um, by that feral Wampa in Hoth, in which he was injured. But thanks to Han Solo, he was brought back to base safely. And it wasn't long before the Empire was knocking on, on, on the Rebel's door, which led to the Battle of Hoth. There you go. I'll tell you one thing, man. Rogue Squadron could have been an awesome animated TV series.
See? I told you about how the freaking TIE Interceptor. The ones who fly solo? They're the worst. Come and get me, brother. When they fly in groups of two or three, they're not so bad, but if they if they fly in, if if you see a tie interceptor flying in the solo group so, flying solo, that's a problem in this mission, of course. Okay, here we go, here we go. Yes. Not this time. Okay, only a few more, and then it's time for Moff Searden. And the theme song that's played is the Imperial March. That classical theme, baby. <laughs> Imagine if, Juke, if Luke joined the em Empire. No, it won't. And now you're dead. Oh, man. Well, time for me to wrap up this video, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoy this. So stay tuned for the next mission. Later.